Boogie Nights, the movie where Mark Wahlberg plays Dirk, a young man who started with nothing, who reaches great heights and success by using his, um, Diggler. Released in 1997 and set in the late 70s and subsequent 80s, Wahlberg plays Eddie Adams, a youth who dreams big, and after meeting art house film director Jack Horner, played by Burt Reynolds, Adams gets seduced into the glamour and glitz life of the art house film industry, where he changes his name and becomes Dirk Diggler, big star of the raunchy screen. However, as the glamour of the 70s dissipates into the 80s, Dirk and his art house industry peers sober up to the excesses and the effects of the industry, where Dirk's life slumps into a downward spiral. In this insightful and sometimes confronting masterpiece, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson and also featuring an impressive all-star cast. So today we are going to check out Boogie Nights. The movie that displays the glamorous highs and the seedy lows of the art house film industry. So let's hope that demonetization doesn't ensue and check it out. Number 10, Boogie Nights is something of a remake. You know, for the longest time, I thought Boogie Nights was based on a true story. It feels so personal and almost autobiographical, but nope, it's not. Well, at least not entirely. Boogie Nights is based on a short mockumentary film director Paul Thomas Anderson directed when he was in high school called The Dirk Diggler Story, which he made when he was just 17 years old in 1987. Anderson managed to get money for making the film by cleaning cages at a pet store. The young, ambitious teen wanted to make a mockumentary after watching the 1984 movie This Is Spinal Tap, and he used a real-life documentary called Exhausted as a template for his mockumentary. Exhausted was based on real-life art house film actor John Holmes. So in many ways, Dirk Diggler is based on John Holmes. And there are many parallels between the real-life performer and fictional character. The biggest difference between Boogie Nights and the Dirk Diggler story are the endings. Boogie Nights has a more positive ending, with Dirk Diggler returning to form after his fall from grace. Whereas the ending to the Dirk Diggler story was bleak, with the character succumbing to a life of substance use, where of course he passes away. The film was shown at the University of California Film Festival, where it got positive attention, and Anderson would go on to direct his first theatrical feature in 1996 with the crime thriller Hard Eight. Number 9, Anderson's Original Vision. After some of the struggles director Paul Thomas Anderson went through when making his first theatrical movie, Hard Eight, he had some ground rules that he insisted on when Boogie Nights went into production with New Line Cinema. He wanted the movie to be three hours long and to be rated NC-17, a rating that stipulates that no one under 18 can watch. However, Boogie Nights producers didn't like this as they felt it wouldn't make the movie very commercial. Anderson insisted that Boogie Nights isn't the type of movie that should appeal to mainstream audiences anyway. The movie's producer, Michael DeLuca in particular, was nervous about this approach. Anderson was given an ultimatum to either make the movie rated R or to be under three hours long. Anderson chose the R rating, which he actually saw as a challenge giving Boogie Nights subject matter. Incidentally, the final cut of Boogie Nights ended up being under three hours long anyway, with it clocking in at two hours and 36 minutes. So, technically, Anderson could have gone for his intended NC-17 rating after all. But here's the thing. Had Boogie Nights been given an NC-17 rating, and thus not become so mainstream, would it still be considered the masterpiece that it is now? Or could it have slipped into obscurity? Even seen as an obscure curiosity like, say, Showgirls? Well, we may never know. Number 8. The Search for Dirk Diggler Anderson's number one choice for playing Dirk Diggler was Leonardo DiCaprio after seeing him in the movie Basketball Diaries. And DiCaprio did like the script, but chose to star in Titanic instead. And, well, the rest was history as they say. The interesting thing is, is that back in the late 90s, DiCaprio was something of a teenage heartthrob. Had he starred in Boogie Nights, and that probably would have smashed that image to pieces. 
Joaquin Phoenix was then offered the part, but he turned it down, feeling hesitant due to Boogie Nights' subject matter. DiCaprio recommended Mark Wahlberg to Anderson, who co-starred with DiCaprio in Basketball Diaries. Although Wahlberg had previously done some acting, as well as be a Kelvin Klein model, back then he was most well known for his hip-hop group, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Wahlberg didn't want to do Boogie Nights at first, as Showgirls had recently come out at that time and was a disaster. But after reading the script, Wahlberg changed his mind and was cast. Boogie Nights launched his career as an actor. He does a brilliant job as Dirk Diggler. He has the drive and determination that you would expect from a young person wanting to make it big. But he also brought a lot of vulnerability to the role and empathy, as there are plenty of times in this movie that you really feel bad for him, and he never stops being likable. The fact of the matter is, Mark Wahlberg totally brought Dirk Diggler to life. Number seven, other casting possibilities. So what about the other cast members of Boogie Nights? Well, when it came to the underground basement director, Jack Horner, Sidney Pollack, Harvey Keitel, Warren Beatty, and Bill Murray were considered at some stage, but either declined or ended up being turned down. So the part ended up being given to Burt Reynolds, who although had great success in the 70s thanks to movies like Deliverance and Smokey and the Bandit, during the 80s and 90s, his career had something of a decline and Boogie Nights gave his career a resurgence. Samuel L. Jackson was offered the role of Buck Swoop, as Anderson had previously worked with him on Hard Eight, but he declined the offer. So instead, the part went to the legendary Don Cheadle in one of his earlier film roles. Gwyneth Paltrow was offered the role of Roller Girl, but turned it down. Drew Barrymore and Tatum O'Neill were interested in the part of Roller Girl, along with Heather Graham, but Anderson didn't think that Graham was right for the role. But at the insistence of her agent, she did manage to read for the part where she was then cast. And yes, Boogie Nights was indeed my introduction to Heather Graham. And yeah, I had a big crush on her after watching the movie. Number six, Burt Reynolds' love-hate relationship with Boogie Nights. Yes, it's kind of become legend that Burt Reynolds did not like Boogie Nights, and on several occasions supposedly admitted to never even seeing the final completed film. Reynolds' bittersweet relationship with Boogie Nights started while filming the movie, as he frequently clashed with Anderson. A major source of their conflict was Reynolds wanting to improvise, whereas Anderson wanted him to go by the script. And on one occasion, supposedly, and I do mean supposedly, Burt Reynolds even punched Anderson out of frustration. The story goes that after watching an early cut of the movie, Reynolds fired his agent for getting him involved with Boogie Nights. Despite going on to be nominated for an Academy Award and winning a Golden Globe for his performance in Boogie Nights, Reynolds still had no love for the movie. And when Anderson offered him a role for his next movie, Magnolia, he swiftly turned it down. However, it seems that in later days, Reynolds did make peace with Boogie Nights, as in 2012, he called the movie extraordinary. And he insisted that despite his relationship with Anderson, he didn't dislike Boogie Nights at all. Personally, I think it's a shame that there was animosity to begin with. As to me personally, Burt Reynolds as Jack Horner is my favorite Reynolds performance ever. Number five, no story arcs by design. Usually when we follow a fictional story or movie, particularly one that's character driven like Boogie Nights, there will always be a moment of change in the third act where our characters have learned a life lesson and use this to make changes in their lives. This is known as story arcs. Well, Boogie Nights doesn't actually follow the traditional story arc trope and that's by design too. Director Paul Thomas Anderson said that that doesn't happen here and that usually in a movie, characters do a 90 degree change, but in Boogie Nights, everyone stays the same. Although in Boogie Nights we go on a journey with these characters and see many of them hit rock bottom, that doesn't come at the price of changing who the characters are, or what they do, or their life view and personalities. And it's true! By the end of the movie, Jack Horner is still a director, Dirk Diggler is still an actor, and Roller Girl is still... the uh, well, the uh, Roller Girl. If anything, it's more about the changing of the time periods than it is the people. One era ending and changing into another. In this case, the carefree glamour and glitz of the 70s and the washed up sobering excesses of the 80s. 
Now, if we were to try and find any kind of story arc with any of the characters, it will be the Buck Swope character, who actually spends the entire movie searching for an identity, who ends up leaving the industry, gets married and has a kid, and even opens up his own stereo store. And maybe even the Reed Wathchild character, played by John C. Riley, who by the end of the movie lives out his lifelong dream of becoming a magician. But despite those changes, the characters are still the same characters that they were at the start of the movie. First time viewers may think that after becoming broke, suffering addiction, getting beaten up and shot at, that Dirk Diggler may have the moment where he decides to change his life and move on from the industry, but no, by the end he's back making movies. And I kind of like that. It breaks traditions and expectations. And to me, it has a message of, we are who we are. So it's best to be good people and to make the best with what we have in life. Number four, Boogie Nights without the song. Ever noticed that Boogie Nights is a movie that features heaps of songs from the 70s and 80s, but doesn't actually feature the song Boogie Nights? That's kind of weird, right? You would think that Boogie Nights would be the first song that we hear, but nope, it was the 1977 song Best of My Love by The Emotions. Paul Thomas Anderson named the movie after the song Boogie Nights, which came out in 1976 by The Heat Waves. But the band's frontman, Johnny Wilder Jr., refused for the song to be used in the movie, as his song Boogie Nights was about dancing, and not the art house film industry, so he was against it. So because of this, despite being called Boogie Nights, we don't actually hear the song Boogie Nights. But regardless, that title just goes so well with the movie. I mean, what else are they going to call it? Jessie's Girl? Number three, one of the songs in Boogie Nights comes from a popular 1980s cartoon. Boogie Nights features many funky, memorable songs from the 70s and 80s. Not only do the songs help set the time period the movie is based in, but the use of the music also helps to tell Boogie Nights' story like the song Best of My Love that was played at the start of the movie, to the memorable but tension-fueled Jessie's Girl scene. From the disco days of the 70s to 80s pop, the music in Boogie Nights really benefits the overall experience of the film. However, one of the songs used comes from the most unlikeliest of places, the animated Transformers movie. It's a scene where Dirk Diggler leaves the art house film industry and tries his hand in the music biz, where he sings the song The Touch which he does quite badly. The song was originally recorded by Stan Bush for the as mentioned Transformers movie in 1986, and Anderson also previously featured the song in the Dirk Diggler mockumentary movie that Boogie Nights is based on. So despite all the songs from popular artists that are used in Boogie Nights, it's interesting that Anderson can also turn to the famous robots in disguise for some musical inspiration too. The irony being Wahlberg would end up starring in one of the live-action Transformers movies several years ago. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the one that had all the explosions and all the robots hitting each other. The Boogie Nights soundtrack is honestly epic and is a must for all those who are fans of music from this time period. And yes, the soundtrack even includes Mark Wahlberg's awkward rendition of The Touch. <laughs> Number two, taking inspiration from Goodfellas. When it came to filming the opening sequence at the disco in Boogie Nights, Paul Thomas Anderson took inspiration from the great Martin Scorsese himself, particularly a scene from his movie Goodfellas, where we see Harry and Karen enter the Copacabana Club, which consists of one long shot of the characters walking around the establishment without any cuts, just one long continual shot. Anderson emulated this for his opening scene in Boogie Nights, where like that scene in Goodfellas, he did one long take with no cuts or edits. The sequence would start with a crane shot and then shift to a steady cam, so it was quite innovative filmmaking, especially for a new director. However, he didn't beat Scorsese's scene, as that one shot lasted three minutes and three seconds, whereas the opening in Boogie Nights lasted two minutes and 53 seconds, but it still looks very impressive, and unless you've got a stopwatch, who's really going to know which scene is longer? Number 1. Box Office Nights Boogie Nights was released at the Toronto International Film Festival in September 1997, and then had a somewhat limited release in the following October. The movie made over $43 million on a $15 million budget, so it did nearly triple its money back, but it wasn't exactly a runaway hit either. 
but that could be down to not being shown in as many theatres as other movies. The critics loved Boogie Nights. They felt that it subverted expectations and was daring with its subject material, along with exploring themes that not many Hollywood movies would explore. It was also felt that despite its long running time, Boogie Nights never drags or feels boring. From the start to the end, it's captivating and holds your attention. Gene Siskel even went as far as calling the movie beautifully made, and also praised it for recreating the San Fernando Valley of the 70s and 80s and how authentic it felt. And of course, all the performances were praised too. Boogie Nights was nominated for and even won several awards, some of which were thanks to the acting talents of Burt Reynolds and Julianne Moore, who played the tragic Amber Waves. All in all, Boogie Nights proves that a mainstream movie can touch into sensitive issues and topics that some may feel uncomfortable talking about. Issues that do happen, but often get pushed aside in order to appease commercialism. Boogie Nights lays the topic bare on the table for all to see, as we the audience briefly walk in the shoes and lives of these exceptional characters, and that itself makes it a unique movie experience. Personally, I found out about Boogie Nights in my early 20s through word of mouth in the mid 2000s, and upon watching it, it was a movie that I instantly loved and go back to at least once a year. It's a movie that explores the highs and lows of success, one that affects you and your views on movies and filmmaking in general, and it does so for the better. So yeah, Boogie Nights is a movie experience that all age-appropriate lovers of cinema should totally check out. It's a journey that's both captivating and engaging. And in a weird way, it leaves you thinking, what if it was you in these situations? Anyway, I'm Minty, and if I was to ever have an art house film name, it would probably be Mintosaurus Rex. Rawr. See ya!